welcome to Hip Hughes History. We're banging out the Constitution for Dummies series. We're wrapping it up with the 21st Amendment. So we're going to take a look at it, the sections, what it means, easy ways to remember it. Your brain's about to grow three times its size. How exciting is that? All right, this is an easy one to remember, um, and I'm going to teach you that in a second, but let's define it. The 21st Amendment is the repeal of prohibition. It X's out the 18th Amendment. How about that? It's the only amendment that's really written in order to, um, you know, void out a previous amendment. And really great way to remember this, and it's an easy way, is just to kind of think in your mind, what are the drinking ages in American history? It's got nothing to do with drinking ages, nothing, absolutely nothing. But it is about drinking, so most people can come up with, oh, well, you used to be 18, you gotta be 21 today, so that would be the 18th Amendment, which is the Prohibition Amendment, and the 21st Amendment, which is the end of Prohibition. People are gonna be allowed to drink again. We're not gonna go through the 18th Amendment idea because there's a video right there, look at the magic on the screen, and you can certainly go watch that, but this temperance movement, what brought us this amendment, really thought that it was going to cure the ills of our society, and of course the Roaring Twenties teaches us anything you know, but that becoming true. We have the rise of speakeasies. People are drinking more than when they were just going to the saloon. Um, we thought crime rates would go down. Crime rates soared. We thought people would follow the law. Nobody's following the law. So really, by the end of the 1920s and with the election in 1932, um, during the Great Depression of FDR, and I think the Great Depression has a lot to do with this as well. You know, people are, you know, out of work and they're unemployed. They might want to drink, if you know what I mean. Um, don't drink, it's bad for you. But either way, with the election of FDR, there really is a, a congressional movement to get this bad boy done. We could read a quote really quick, uh, John Rockefeller, you could look it up on the board, who was a prohibitionist, has changed his mind by the 1930s. You can see the quote on the wall. When prohibition was introduced, I hoped that it would be widely supported by public opinion, and the day would soon come when the evil effects of alcohol would be recognized. I slowly and reluctantly come to believe that this has not been the result. So, people that were for it are against it, and uh, we're ready to take some action. But it's a little bit weird the way that we do it. So, there's a few different ways that you can amend the Constitution. Um, this is laid out in Article 5 of uh, the U.S. Constitution, how to change that bad boy. And with every amendment but this amendment, it's been two-thirds of both houses and three-fourths of all states. Two-thirds of both houses and three-fourths of all states. What a dumb way to remember that. But there's another way. It's going to not go to the state legislature. The other way would be two-thirds of both houses and three-fourths of state conventions. That doesn't rhyme very well. The difference between a convention and a legislature is that you can go kind of directly to the people. This was the idea behind what Congress was doing. They were really afraid if they threw, you know, this amendment to the state legislatures, the state legislatures were tied to temporary lobbies. Um, they had um, a lot of religious roots. There was a lot of people that weren't going to budge on this issue. So they felt that they went to the state convention idea, they'd have a better shot, and boy were they right. Each state has a different way of doing state conventions, but many of them turn it over to the people, and the people want to drink, and this bad boy is going to happen. Um, even in the interim, when FDR comes in, he recommends, and Congress does it, they even change the Volstead Act. And people are drinking beer, I think 3.2% alcohol, even before the 21st Amendment. But let's take a really quick look at the 21st Amendment. You can see Section 1 right there, the 18th Amendment, see you later, alligator, <laughs> you're a dead man. Two of the 21st Amendment, you can see it right there, um, is basically going to say that this is a state issue. If a state wants to have laws that ban alcohol, the state has a right to do that. And I uh, think in Mississippi, all the way up to 1966, alcohol was illegal. In Kansas, there were no public bars to 1987. Um, and there's been numerous court cases that have dealt with this, with even the federal government um, demanding the age being 21 and tying it to federal funds, whether that's a violation of Section 2, but I'm talking too much! Section 3 is just really kind of a, a time deadline, a seven-year deadline before the amendment process would stop. Most amendments have that sort of section. So there you go. Go get a brewski. Go take a shot. And alcohol's bad for you, so maybe you shouldn't do that. But either way, really great way to remember it, 1821, drinky drinky, I think that you got the major ideas and that uh, we hope that you did the learning really good. Jennifer Joyner and John Larkin and Matt Allen, this is a little bit of a shout out for you. You guys helped me when my channel was down and we needed some equipment, you did a GoFundMe and I really appreciate that, so thank you for that. A giddy up for all of the YouTube people out there that support YouTube creators and press buttons and uh, help us do what we do. So thanks for that, guys. Giddy up! 
I haven't begged you to subscribe. What are you doing? Haven't subscribed? You cray, cray, press the button right there. It's the best thing that you could do in the whole wide world. And remember, where attention goes, energy flows.